Thank you. If you allow me, I will uh, start from the very beginning after the Second Karabakh War ended. There was a certain vacuum. Uh, at that time, uh, former MIS group still was operational and functional, and uh, the representatives, these three co-chairs, when they visited Azerbaijan afterwards, I uh, realized that they themselves do not know what should be done next, because Azerbaijan actually did everything itself, put an end to, to the conflict, and actually most of the principles which have been negotiated for more than 20 years have been achieved. So it was us, the country, and me personally, who proposed to start to work on peace agreement, because their question was, what should we do next? And uh, my idea was, after Karabakh deal is done, so what we need to do, two countries should uh, normalize their relations. Uh, so that was publicly announced by Azerbaijan, but uh, there was no response from Armenia. Then after a while, we uh, disclosed the principles on which the peace agreement should be based. Those five principles, fundamental principles of international law, I'm sure everybody who is involved in this process uh, knows what I'm talking about. And still it took a lot of time for Armenia to agree. So negotiations uh, started on our initiative. They um, continued for a certain period of time without uh, any tangible progress for one particular reason. Because Armenia wanted to incorporate in the peace agreement issue of so-called Nagorno-Karabakh. And we were opposing that uh, based on the fact that this is our internal issue, and internal issue should not be subject of uh, agreement between two states. And um, having this issue unresolved, it was absolutely useless to concentrate on some other not so important topics. So after uh, Azerbaijan restored its sovereignty, Last September, uh, we waited for three more months before Armenia uh, agreed to restart negotiations. So from a practical point of view, the real negotiations started only last December, so only six months, and they've been held on the level of foreign ministers. There have been several meetings of uh, foreign ministers of both countries in different uh, locations. And with respect to the uh, text of the peace agreement, uh, as I was informed by our foreign minister, about from 80 to 90 percent of the text is agreed. So Armenia had to withdraw its uh, reservation and all this terminology on so called Nagorno Karabakh, and that opened the door for normalization. But there are two important issues which must be addressed, at least at the moment two. One, uh, Armenia should give a positive uh, response to our proposal uh, to have a joint application by Armenian and Azerbaijan to OSCE to dissolve the MIS group. Because MIS group is dysfunctional for many months and maybe already a couple of years. No chance for MIS group to become functional. First, because the co-chairs now actually de facto at war with each other. I mean two against one. Second, uh, France completely lost any uh, chance of being uh, not even mediated, to being around here in the region because they cannot be in the region of Southern Caucasus without our agreement. If they want to do it without our agreement, they will fail again. And once again, it will be another 
painful loss for them. So, in these circumstances, what's the sense of keeping uh, means group the euro alive? In OSC, as you know, there is a consensus mechanism. So, if Armenia wants to keep the euro means group, it will remain. But if it wants to keep it, that means that their territorial claims to Azerbaijan are still here. And this is very uh, serious factor. It's a kind of a litmus test. If uh, they mean what they say, why I say that? Because often they say something which is absolutely contradictory to uh, what they do. If they really say now, Karabakh is Azerbaijan, on the very high level, though in 2019, several kilometers from here in Hankendi, the same person was very emotionally saying Karabakh is Armenia. So now he says Karabakh is Azerbaijan. Good. I mean, uh, how to say, transformation and reforms always appreciate. But now it must be backed by uh, practical steps. First, joint application to OSC to dissolve this group. Armenia disagrees. And second, change of Armenian constitution. And once again, I'd like to say that it's not something which we are doing uh, in order to interfere into their affairs, no. Armenian constitution has a reference to declaration of independence, which clearly uh, possesses a territorial threat to Azerbaijan, because it talks about, uh, re about unification of uh, so-called Nagorno-Karabakh and Armenia. So until this uh, paragraph is there, peace agreement is not possible. And again, I want everybody to understand me uh, correctly. It's uh, absolutely uh, not part of our interference. But with this paragraph in the Constitution, it is not possible because Constitution is higher than any other document including international treaty. So we don't want to find ourselves in a situation when one day they will change their mind and again we will have to do what we've done in September. Um, so uh, in the meantime, the process on agreement on the text is continuing. Uh, I don't know when uh, will be the next meeting of foreign ministers. Uh, I'm now less optimistic because, as you probably know, Prime Minister Pashinyan refused to meet with me in uh, UK. That was a proposition by the UK government uh, to organize a meeting between us on the sidelines of uh, event in Oxfordshire. Uh, but Armenian side refused. And we were surprised because just four months ago, uh, Chancellor Schultz organized this meeting in Munich, where he participated for five, six minutes, and then he left. That was a kind of a modality of the meeting. So he would meet with both leaders and then say some introductory remarks and then leave, and that's how it happened. So UK government uh, proposed the same with participation of Prime Minister of UK, but Prime Minister Pashinyan refused. So if he doesn't want to talk to me, then what kind of peace we're talking about? If he doesn't want to talk to UK Prime Minister, then why didn't he go to London, to Oxfordshire? So a lot of things which are in deep contradiction, but we will see. I just, as I said, returned yesterday. We will see uh, one track is the text, another track is what I said about the legal format.